morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. My name is Atia, and I would like to welcome you to Straightforward Talk with Atia. Today on Straightforward Talk, I would like to talk about finding the right person. First of all, let me say this. Everything we do in our lives must have an aim and a purpose, and that includes courtship and dating. Now, if you're just looking for the type of relationship where you can build a friendship with, go out to dinner, maybe to a movie, go to the theater, just someone to laugh and talk with, then that requires a, so a certain course of action. In those types of relationship, it really doesn't matter if it's male or female, unless you're looking for the opposite gender to maybe hang out with and help provide the balance, that's fine, and you're not necessarily looking for marriage, then don't try to turn those relationships into long-term relationships. It just doesn't work. Now, on the other hand, if you are looking for someone to spend the rest of your life with, someone that you can have a long-term commitment with and build your life with that person, then that also requires a certain course of action. It's very important that you take the necessary steps to actually meet the right person for you and to actually meet someone that is compatible with you. Compatibility is a very important uh, factor in terms of connecting with people that you ultimately would like to marry. You have to be going in the same directions. You have to be of like minds. And so to meet that type of person who is right for you, there are things that you actually can do. And so I would like to talk about five steps. There are many steps a person can take, but I would like to specifically focus on five steps to help you find the right person for you. Finding the right person for your life depends largely on you being the right person. The first step that it will behoove you to take is to first know and be honest about who you are and what you want for your own life. When you come to the relationship table, it's important to come to the table truthfully. In order to find someone that will appreciate and accept you for who you are, you must present the real you. Oftentimes when we meet someone, we wear these masks. And actually, we're two-faced. We show one face when we're first meeting the person, and then later on in the relationship, when we're beginning to have issues, we realize that we didn't really bring our true self to the table. So the first step in finding that right person is knowing and being honest about who you are and what you want for your own life. You don't have to compromise. There is someone out there who is specifically created for you. There is that special person who is compatible with you. But in order to find that person who is compatible with you, you have to be the real you. The second step to finding the right person is to be available for relationship. I can't tell you how important that is. You have to make sure that you are available to be in a committed and long-term relationship and that you have resolved all other past relationship issues. And oftentimes we find this when you meet a person who has a child and naturally there's going to be a connection with the baby's father or the baby's mother. However, we haven't necessarily made that clean break in terms of the relationship itself. You always have the relationship with your child, but have you made that clean break with baby's mother or baby's father? And have you resolved those issues where you can now engage in a new relationship, a committed relationship to take that relationship forward? In order to find the right person, you have to make sure that you are available and ready to be in a relationship. And so many people try to start something new and they haven't actually even ended the old. You can't bring old baggage to a new relationship because otherwise you get the same baggage. If you're wanting to move on with your life, then you need to resolve those past issues. Do you have a job? where you travel all the time and you're never home. You don't have time to really get into a relationship because your job requires so much of your time that you don't have room left over to even nurture that particular relationship to make it strong and successful. So when we 
talk about being available to even be in a committed relationship. Is your life or does your life have that necessary balance where it actually has room for a person that now becomes your number one priority? Are you a mama's boy? Are you a daddy's girl? If you have been a mama's boy, it's time to cut those apron strings. You have to now begin to reprioritize yourself and be ready to make your wife your number one person that you go to. Those relationships now have to be reprioritized. If you are not able to cut those apron strings, then you're not ready for a long-term committed relationship that leads to marriage. If you have been a daddy's girl, it's okay to be a daddy's girl, but you have to remember when you get married or when you're in a serious relationship that's heading towards the direction of marriage, you can't continue to run to daddy to buy those things for you that now becomes your husband's responsibility and duty to provide for you. And if your, your husband is not able to purchase it or get it for you at that time, are you mature enough to know that, hey, I have to wait or do you continue to run to daddy if your response is that oh if my husband can't do it then my father can then you're not ready for that long-term committed relationship so the second step to finding the right person is to make sure that you are actually available for a committed relationship The third step to finding the right person for you is to be actively demonstrating accountability and responsibility in your own life first. And what I mean by this, for example, if you have over $60,000 worth of child support that you need to pay, you're not ready. You got to deal with your own issues before you connect with someone else. Otherwise, your issues become the two of you issues. And not too many out people out there are really willing to make that kind of sacrifice and commitment when you got too much baggage you bring into the table. Now, there may be somebody out there for you who can wipe that slate clean, help you get rid of the child support issue, but then is that person helping you to grow? So you have to first demonstrate accountability and responsibility in your own life and make sure that you have your act together before you come to the table and, and, and work on connecting to someone else. Also, do you have financial bills where you can't even take care of yourself and you're looking to find the right person? Well. A healthy marriage also means having a healthy fiscal situation. So you can't bring to the table bills and debts and overbearing amount of uh, problems in terms of financial and then want to connect to someone because then you place you and your mate into a condition of poverty. And so you want to be actively responsible and accountable in terms of making sure all those things are together. Are you um, a shopaholic? Are you frivolous in your decision making in terms of your financial situation? Are you out there sleeping with any Tom, Dick, or Harry, or Sally, Susie, or Mary? Being actively demonstrating accountability and responsibility also deals with not having casually sexual relationships. It's powerful in you really being able to dig deep and get into knowing that person, not on that physical level, but on an emotional, spiritual, and psychological level to make sure that the person you are connecting with is mature enough to be able to look beyond that physical and sexual relationship. Sexuality and sensuality is designed to strengthen the bond in marriage. It's not designed for you to try this and try that and then bring to the relationship table all of those other bonds and cords that you've connected with other people. And many people don't really understand the connection that is made during that. And so when you are ready to engage in a committed relationship that leads to marriage, the best thing you can do for yourself and your potential mate is to wait until you get married to engage in sexual intercourse. 
and you'll find that you will appreciate the connection much more and that the respect level that you both have for one another is, is off the chain. Are you productive in your life? Are you actually doing something to follow your dream? Are you producing something that you can actually bring to the relationship that enhances it? Or are you just a taker? Are you one that just drain all of the energy of the other person? Part of being responsible and accountable is taking your gifts and multiplying those gifts and, and creating and being productive in your own life before engaging into a relationship with someone else. Because what happens when you're productive in your own life, you bring that productivity to the relationship table and you complement one another with your gifts, your talents, and your skills. And a lot of times when people think of long-term relationship and marriage, they're thinking of someone who can complement what they do in their life. And so to have a vision and a life mission for yourself gives you that direction when you are looking to connect with someone on a deeper level because you definitely want to be with someone who complements what you do, what you have a passion for doing, and what you love to do. Um, there's a science to mating and finding someone who is compatible with you also deals with you being actively involved in cultivating your own gifts and talents so that the one that you connect with complements what you do and vice versa. So the third step is to actively demonstrate accountability and responsibility. The fourth step to finding the right person is to be crystal clear and resolved in the type of man or woman that you want in your life. And I do want to say this, everything that glitters ain't gold. While it's important to be physically attracted to the person you're with, that physical attraction doesn't always take place physically, if you know what I'm saying. A lot of times for a person to be physically attractive, that connection is made mentally first or spiritually. And then that spiritual connection brings about a physical um, excitement, a physical connection. And so you have to be clear in terms of what you want because you'll have a lot of people who will come across your path, who will come into your life, and you will find those people attractive in one way or another. Is honesty important to you? Is fidelity important to you? Is it important that your mate doesn't travel all the time? It is important that your mate doesn't have children or never been married. Whatever the characteristics of the type of person that you are looking for, you have to be resolved in knowing what that is and be willing to stick to that and not settle. Because if you settle, you'll find that you'll have problems later on. You never want to settle. Take the time to make a list. Write down what that person looks like. If it's important that a person be in a certain socioeconomic bracket, you have to, to know that that's what's acceptable for you and not be ashamed about it. Just know that this is your truth and this is something that's important for you in order to move forward with that relationship. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You just have to be true in terms of what it is you want. And so one of the things I encourage many people to do is make a list of all those things that you want in a man or a woman. And you prioritize that list on what's extremely important, what you can't do without, what you may be able to do without, and it's, it's up for negotiation, and what's actually not negotiable. So making that list will actually help you to be able to better sift through the different potentials that come in and out of your life. And so the fourth thing is being clear and resolved in terms of the type of man or woman you want in your life. The fifth step to finding the right person is to network 
and meet people in the type of environments that naturally would have the type of person that you are looking for to frequent. Um, if you choose not a worldly person to have in your life, then it makes sense that you would not meet your potential mate in a bar, a nightclub, or at a party. If you are looking for someone who has a strong spiritual foundation or someone who is religious, then naturally it would appear that you would be able to meet that type of person maybe at a gospel fest, at some spiritual event or function or concert, or even in a spiritual house. If you're looking for someone who is physically fit or healthy, then naturally you want to be physically fit and healthy and perhaps you may meet someone at a health conference or at um, the health club or the gym. You have to place yourself in those environments and not necessarily going there solely to scope out and see who you can meet, but actually to develop the type of lifestyle that, that will allow you to attract that type of person in your life. So I'm not telling you to go there and scope out and just for the sole purpose of meeting someone that you can marry. But what I am saying is that it is important to develop the type of lifestyle of the type of person that you are looking to attract. In other words, be the change that you would like to see in the world. And so the fifth step to finding the right person is to network and place yourself in the environments of the type of person that you are trying to meet. Again, finding the right person for your life requires you to be the right person. Everyone wants the opportunity to come to the table and meet someone who is of like minds, of like spirit, and who has their act together. Therefore, you can't expect to come to the relation table with baggage, with drama, with all sorts of unresolved issues, and then expect to find someone who has everything together. There's a saying that you call to yourself what you are. In order to attract someone who is a type of person that you truly desire in your life for that long-term relationship or marriage, then you have to be the change that you want to see in the world. So in other words, if you want someone who is healthy, someone who has their act together, someone who is in a stable financial situation, someone who is educated, whatever the situation is, you have to be that type of person. Everyone wants the opportunity to connect with someone who is healthy. You have to bring your healthy and whole self to the relationship table because that gives you the greatest chance of success and the greatest chance of meeting someone who has their act together. So thank you for watching this episode of Straightforward Talk with Atia. See you next time.